regreso aquí en Auto 060 y bueno, hablamos ahí con la experta de Car MD sobre lo que se debe hacer para mantener en buen estado el auto y qué mejor forma de continuar el show eh, con una entrevista muy interesante eh, con un experto ahora de Edmunds.com, Ron Montoya. We're going to switch back to English now to continue the show that way. I was saying, Ron, uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time to talking with us. Uh, I was saying there that uh, we started the show talking about the, um, the report on the health of the cars in the U.S. And now what a better thing to continue is like with your project, which is fascinating to me. How are you, Ron? Hi, I'm doing great, thanks. Thank you. So, uh, Ron, um, he works for Edmunds.com, um, and um, you launched a project which is pretty fascinating called the Debt Free Car Project. Can you talk a little bit about it, please? Sure. Well, we wanted to test out the theory whether you can buy a very inexpensive car and maintain it over the course of the year and just kind of see if that would be less expensive than financing a car at a dealership. I know a lot of people tend to have problems with credit and, uh, you know, they end up getting into problems and paying higher interest rates. So we thought, why not just buy a car outright? You save up a little bit for it. So we chose a 96 Lexus ES300 that we got for about $3,800 after taxes. And we drove it for about one whole year. And we just took care of it and uh, tracked all the maintenance costs and just kind of wrote about it uh, on a regular basis. Yeah. And did you select the Lexus because of its good reputation and actually good record of, of uh, maintaining its value, its um, quality, uh, the performance, or it was just like what fell into your budget? How was the, the criteria to decide what car to buy? Well, it was a little bit of both. On the one hand, the Lexus uh, shares a lot of parts with the Toyota Camry. This was a Lexus DS 300 So we felt like we could get a lot of parts out there available to us. We thought the car looked good. It, I think that it looks held up well for like a 16-year-old car. Yeah. And uh, so it was just a combination of price, reliability, and just, you know, the total package there. Yeah, uh, that's right. We're talking with uh, Ron Montoya, uh, consumer advice editor for Edmunds.com, uh, talking about the um, debt free car project. Um, so, Ron, tell me about it. So, you took the car for one year and um, you used it like so any, uh, any regular person would use it, right? But uh, also, you took like a pretty long trip with it, too. Yes, uh, one of my colleagues, he drove across the United States and back. Uh, which was about a thousand, or actually about three thousand miles, but it's not more. And, uh, it didn't actually leave him stranded. It did tend to get overheated at one point. We got that fixed. But generally he made it, uh, he loved the trip. And it was just a test of that, you know, you don't have to make a sacrifice with this type of a car in the sense that it's only going to take you to work. If you want to take a road trip with it, you can do so. This is just, if you take care of a car, it's going to be, you can have it as a daily driver. You can drive it everywhere you want. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, um, you said you had the, the car for a whole year, and then you spent an average about uh, $253 a month in maintenance and repairs. And that's pretty much what you will spend anyway in a, in a new car, right? But uh, this is, you, already, you pay the car cash, I guess, and that will be the example for the project. And then it's pretty much the, the amount of money that you will, will spend. Did you also, does this also include... Um, um, uh, um, insurance and all those kind of stuff? No, unfortunately, we weren't able to track insurance costs because we sort of have our own company insurance. So we weren't able to get the insurance costs, but I was contacted by someone that works for an insurance company that he said, you know what, this model Lexus is actually really uh, cheap to insure, and it's a really recommended car for that. Uh, and going back to the maintenance for a second, it actually ended up being a little bit less than the average monthly payment because we sort of pictured someone with poor credits Okay. And we calculated their average monthly payment to be around three hundred and fifty seven dollars. So, you know, we came in about a hundred dollars less than that. And you know, one of the differences is it's not a monthly payment that you're making to someone, right? It's just for maintenance. So if one month you don't want to take care of something, you're not gonna get into problems, right? It's you're just gonna not fix that item and maybe you can put it off to a, uh, another month. Yeah, although sometimes when you uh, let some uh, little maintenance uh, go a little bit longer, that could be translated into something much bigger down the road, no? Oh, yeah, I agree. You know, there's some things you have to take care of. And in the beginning for us, we did uh, experience a little bit of problems with kind of going over the budget because, you know, when you get one of these old cars, you're going to have to fix some things immediately. And so we had to replace new tires, new battery, and a couple of other high-ticket items. So... We started out a little bit uh, over budget, but then 
things leveled up, as you kind of take care of those big items, the car starts to become more reliable over time. Yeah. So um, this is this, was this the first time you you've done something like this? I know Edmunds.com is very active in doing this all these uh, test drives on new cars, but uh, I'm not sure if this is the first one that you've done or the first one that I I realized that you were doing. Uh, so we usually do new cars for one whole year, uh, and in the past we've done a couple of used cars, but they were more like affordable sport cars. So we had a used Corvette, a used BMW M3. Um, but this was sort of mine and my coworkers' idea. We wanted to just go to the complete opposite and just do a car that people who are struggling could identify with, and uh, it proved to be very successful for us, and uh, we definitely have some interest in doing it again. Yeah, it's very interesting because uh, you're right. Even the new cars, um, you can buy a new car now for about fifteen fifteen thousand dollars. Like there's like Fiestas and like Hyundai Kia for around that price. But uh, still, some people don't have that kind of money. Um, so it's highly recommended to look for. Well, can you give a, a, a few tips of people who are looking into five thousand dollar cars? Uh, what they should look for. Yeah, so if you're looking in the car at this price range, you want to, I really recommend spending the extra money. It costs about $50 for a vehicle history report. And you that would be like the Carfax? Carfax? Yeah, com. okay. Yeah, like the Carfax, or there's one called AutoCheck. And this gives you an idea of whether the car has been salvaged or in an accident, uh, and how well it was maintained. And this will give you a background on the car, so that's a good thing to have. You want to bring a mechanic with you. They probably charge you about $100 come with you and go take a look at the car and give it a nice inspection. Yeah, and uh, some things that people should be looking for, I mean, some obvious, some things are obvious, but some others aren't that, that obvious, you, and uh, again, bringing the mechanic might be a good idea, but like, will be, is there something that they should ask the mechanic, like, let's say, transmissions, AC, or something like that? Yeah, you, when you want to go in there and just test drive the car, see if it's leaking any uh, oil or fluid. Um, take a look at the quality of the tires, start the car, listen to the engine, and just kind of drive it around and listen for any noises. Yeah. And also, I, I, I think it's a good uh, recommendation to give to people to, like, don't expect more than what you're paying, paying for, right? Because, I mean, uh, it is, this in this case, was a 15-year-old car, and, uh, like, it's a 15-year-old car after all. Yes, you know, I, I agree, and that's, I do want to warn people that, you know, ultimately you're buying an old car, that you can't catch everything in the inspection and just sometimes things are going to break down no matter what. It doesn't mean that the car's unreliable. It's just uh, time takes its toll on everything and it's going to, some parts are going to break down over time. Yeah. And at what point should people decide, well, it's not worth fixing this? Because, I mean, you are at the end, I see in your report that you sold the car for $2,668. So at one point, it's like a breaking point where you'd like, it's not worth fixing something, right? Yeah, you know, the general idea is uh, unless you're spending more than the price of the car in one whole year, uh, you know, that's that's when it's time to sort of look for something else. But if you're, you know, I, I, I tell people like this, even if you have a $1,000 repair, that's not going to buy you a new car, right? So yeah. sometimes you just have to make some high-ticket repairs in order to keep the car going. But if you see a regular pattern of the car breaking down, you know, every other month or things like that, and that's when you should get rid of it. Yeah, especially if it's the same thing breaking, right? Like if you have like the transmission or high, high uh, ticket price uh, items, uh, if it's the same thing recurring, like it's a point where like, you know what, cut your losses and go to the next one, right? That's right, but uh, if you just kind of stick with it, it'll at least help you save some money towards uh, the next car, you know, and it might help you buy that one outright as well. Yeah, and uh, so at the end of the project, you saw the car, as we mentioned, uh, any recommendation on, on whether or where to find information? You mentioned true market value, uh, which is part of the Edmunds.com uh, um, website? Yeah, well, we used uh, Edmunds true market value to help us find the car, which was, you know, this is a value of what people are paying for cars in the area, and you can find that on Edmunds.com, but we used it to sort of help let us know what we should pay for the car. And when you go to a dealership, you can sort of use that as a negotiating tool. So you say, hey, I've done my research, and Edmunds tells me I should be paying around this much for the car, so can you, you know, make me a deal on the price? Yeah, and that's the other thing that people uh, should be aware of and, like, very realistic. The moment of selling a used car, we sometimes uh, set up the price much higher than uh, it really worth. Yeah, that is true. And... But at some point, it is a good thing to just go a little bit higher than the value because what ends up happening is if you're selling your car, people want to negotiate. 
And so I would say between 500 to to $1,000, I would raise it over what you think the cars was. And that way, when people negotiate, you have some room to mess around with. Otherwise, you're going to be getting below what you wanted to get for the car. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Ron Montoya, Consumer Advice Editor of Edmunds.com. And uh, obviously, you can find all that kind of, uh, kind of information about new and used cars in Edmunds.com. Uh, so thank you very much for your time, Ron. Thanks, Javier. Thank you. Pues ahí tienen información muy valiosa, este proyecto muy interesante, el auto sin deuda y comprar un auto usado puede ser una opción para la gente que no tiene quizá no muy buen crédito o no tiene siquiera los recursos para comprar un auto nuevo. Ellos compraron un auto del 1996, un Lexus IS300 por 3.800 dólares, lo usaron un año completo. Tuvieron gastos de 253 dólares al mes. Y bueno, es una buena opción para, como decía, la gente que no puede, eh, no tiene los recursos para un auto nuevo, ver la información. Les vamos a poner la información, el reporte completo en facebook.com slash auto 060 para que lo vean, analicen las opciones. Y no se vayan que cuando regresemos, venimos a Miami. Bueno, nosotros estamos aquí, pero los vamos a traer a ustedes aquí a Miami a la conferencia Hispanic Size. Hablamos con representantes de la Toyota y la General Motors. No se vayan, esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota.